Okay, so let's go to quadratics. Uh, this page is a little bit more complex than the other one. The other page, we did um, a, a simple machine learning thing, and then we used JavaScript to make it much better. So in this case, we're going to solve a quadratic for a certain number. I think it's four. Um, yeah, here we go. What we're going to do is, in code, we're going to do 20 batches, learning rate of 0.01, here we're going to do the xy graph that's training. It's only training on four points. And then we're going to solve for x equals four. Uh, first of all, just see if it works. What's going to happen? OK. It's expecting those numbers. When we used random coefficients, we got crappy numbers. Then we did tr 20 batches training it. Notice this is the loss. We're starting at 0.7 and going down to 0.04. That's OK. Um, there are our coefficients. We're doing the equation ax to the power 2 plus bx plus c. So we've gotten 3, 1.7, and 0.89. Um, so when we're expecting 1.1, 5.9, 16 16.8, we got, well, not great results, 5.7 instead of 5.9. But remember, we only did 20 batches. We're teaching the machine it. Here's the equation the machine would like. And for x to the value of 4, we're expecting 57, got 57.1. Okay, now this code's a little bit harder than what we're used to, plus it's showing you how to train a neural network. So let's dive, dive right in. A reminder, ditch that in your code if you're copying this onto um, an editor on your computer, just to see if it still works with the latest version of TensorFlow.js. Um, so this is just printing out the x squared plus b. Uh, times x plus c. It's setting up scalars. This is setting up random uh, scalars for a, b, and c, for these coefficients a, b, and c of the equation. Uh, it's setting up a learning rate and an optimizer using SGD. Go to the API, the js.tensorflow.org API, and read up about SGD. Um, here's the prediction function, which is basically just doing uh, that with a, b, and c. Look at it. It's grabbing a, a, an input tensor um, as a scalar in x. It's squaring x and multiplying a, this one, which is exactly that command there. And then it's b. It's multiplying x and b. OK, so b variable and x. And then it's throwing it all together. So the squared value, it's adding the bx value, and then it's adding c. It's just doing this equation. It predicts pretty easy, and it's returning uh, that answer. The loss one is uh, you're inputting to a loss function your prediction and then the actual value you're expecting. So this is part of the training. Uh, so we're taking the actual value as a scale, scalar. We're subtracting the prediction, and we're squaring it, which basically gets rid of any uh, negatives, uh, and returning it as a scalar, returning the error as a scalar. Uh, there's, here's your train function. This is important to uh, go over several times. It has two iterations. So these are your batches. And then inside each batch, it's based on how long your, how many values are being sent to it. It's taking x, uh, y, number of iterations. And it's using your optimizer. It's setting an inline function to calculate the loss. It's taking your prediction sending your prediction with the actual sample value, uh, y um, true value, and it's figuring out a prediction loss. If i equals 0, so every time a batch goes through, i is going to equal 0, it prints out the, the, the information. Um, it prints out the word loss and the loss. I don't know why that happened so fast. And then a, a, a new line. Um, this is a cool thing. It allows. Uh, the program to wait till each frame of this um, for loop uh, continue uh, and then allows continuing on. Once the whole training has been done, it sets the background green on the button, uh, my button one, two, three. So here's the function that tests x and y. Uh, it's inside the tidy loop. It uh, maps your predicted values which were calculated early, earlier. And it just gives you some information to three decimal places. Um, uh, it's giving the first value. Uh, here's your input data. 
one, two, and uh, zero, one, two, three, zero matches up with 1.1, 1. 1. 1 matches up with 5.9. This is just your X and Y on your, uh, this is your training data. So now we're setting, um, now this is inside the button, okay? Scripts are all done. So we're setting the button style to red. Uh, before training the random coefficients, it's testing it before training, then it's training everything, and then it's testing it after training. The test function prints out some information to the screen. Um, here it's printing out, so the final equation is grabbing all that information for the final equation. Here it's now running the, the unknown, which is four, which actually we know the answer is supposed to be 57, so we're putting in that in as YS, and it's testing that information and printing out the information to the screen. So let's see what the output was. So randomly, um, it's expecting that, got that. It prints out the 20 batches of the loss. After training, it shows you A, B, and C, what it was expecting and what it actually got. It's still not that good. And then it's printing out the whole equation, testing for, telling you it should be 57, and what it got. Now, this is why I'm so pumped about JavaScript. Because that stuff you could get in any, you know, C++ doing uh, machine learning, Python, whatever, whatever language you're using. But here's what you can do with JavaScript. Here we can start changing things. The first thing to change, well, let's try a different number. We don't know what 8 should do. But let's crank this up to 100 batches. And it's gone red, which means it's not done. Let's go. Oh, there it goes. It's doing the batches reasonably quickly. And here we go. The last loss. Look at that. That was way better than 20. Okay, so you can mess around with this, and it wasn't too hard to program. So we've got reasonably similar ABC. There's your more accurate equation. Oh, here we go. Expecting 1.1 got 1.1. Expecting 5.9 got 5.888. Okay, this is something that JavaScript now allows you to figure out, oh, training this network. Boy, 20 batches. Wasn't that great? Do 20 batches again. My loss. This time it's a little bit better, but first time it wasn't. Um, I don't even want to look at the code on this because it's matching a fair bit of um, grabbing information here. But I'll, I'll quickly show you the code. You can go to the page. Um, we're setting up the HTML, and everything's exactly the same there, except you're occasionally grabbing. See, these are really badly named, but it, it's easier for my kids to name things this way. You should name them properly. Okay, so trying to find my text 02. There's my text 02. Um, here we go. So learning rate in the above equation that we just put in 0.01 here, we have to document get element by ID my text 02 value. It's long, but it's always, always the same. Let's look up uh, by ID. And you're going to see all the times we've used that. Um, yeah, it nicely highlights it. So there's my text 02. There's um, inner HTML. Here's the button style background. See, you're always using this. A lot of programmers make a variable with this thing, so your, your code's smaller. But I find beginners get confused about that new variable they had to learn. It's better just to have, they get really used to um, this bit. Uh, there you are, you're setting the button back to being red. Um, here we are, we're grabbing the my x1 value, grabbing the my y1 value. Remember, the code's exactly the same as at the top. We're setting up the data. This is the, um, the original training data uh, by ID. There's my text 01. There's a whole bunch of divs. This is probably one of the other my texts. There we go. My text 14. I saw that at some point. 